How's it going everybody? So today in this video, I want to just give a little bit of clarity and an explanation on why I've been talking about veganism so much in the past couple months or in the past year. So some of my videos, you might, uh, if you're a vegan, you might assume that I'm just attacking veganism and you're most likely going to assume that I'm uneducated about veganism or I'm misinformed or um, I'm just like a, a mindless meat eater or something stupid like that. But uh, the facts are, number one, I was vegan for almost a year. Number two, uh, I've studied vegan nutrition. I've studied all the essential vitamins, minerals, and nutrients that you need um, as a vegan and not as a vegan, you know, what you need to supplement with, etc. I followed countless vegans from all different uh, tribes of the vegan nutrition movement. Okay, I followed raw veganism, I followed um, starchitarian, fruititarian, um, balanced veganism, uh, nutritarianism, uh, even just plain out vegetarianism. I read all the studies. Well, not all the studies, but I've, I've read the, the, the main studies that these vegans always point out, um, especially the China study. I've read that back, forward and back. <laughs> and all of these, uh, all of these uh, population studies and, and correlations and all these things, okay. And I've seen tons and tons of vegans who claim to be in the best health of their life and claim that veganism is, is, is curing their illnesses and whatnot. And then they just, they just break down and just out, and just out of nowhere, it seems like they confess all the health issues that veganism was giving them and they switch or they start eating meat again or go on a full on carnivore diet. Okay. Um, so I consider myself very well informed and I, from what I've seen, most people that comment on my videos claiming that I don't know what I'm talking about when it comes to veganism, most of these people seem like brand new vegans who watched uh, a documentary like What the Health or Cowspiracy or something. And they they just heard like uh, jo Dr. John McDougall or uh, Esselstyn or um, you know, Dean Ornish or they heard like this new guy Goji Man. <laughs> It sounds like they just hear these these authorities um, making claims and they just believe them for face value and they just people just repeat and regurgitate the experts. Oh well, Okinawans live the longest. Blah blah blah. Oh well, um, the American Dietetics Association says that uh, veganism is healthy for all stages of life. Blah blah blah. It's it's all appeal to authority. It's all dogma, and they don't actually understand the. Uh, logic behind what they're saying. Um, they can repeat the logic that these authorities have said, but they don't create their own logic. They're not thinking for themselves. But I've gone forward and back with this. I've had severe health problems from veganism, um, and I just don't see the point in forcing yourself to abide by a nutritional system that is giving you ill health. It makes no sense. So, I don't believe that veganism is horrible in general. I do believe that there are some forms of veganism, some forms of, of a vegan diet that can heal some diseases. I believe that there's some types of fasting that can heal diseases and I believe that there's meat-based diets that can heal diseases and in fact I personally know this I've seen it time and time again but just because fasting can heal diseases just because veganism can heal diseases and just because certain meat-based diets can heal diseases it doesn't mean that any of these systems or diets or protocols, it doesn't mean that it's healthy long term for general health and fueling a, a active, healthy, happy lifestyle. Okay? Food is medicine. 
And it's just like any type of medicine. When you have a, an illness, you take the medicine for as long as you need until the illness is gone. You don't take the medicine or follow the protocol for the rest of your life once the, the illness is healed. Anytime you do this, health problems start to come about. Okay, we all know the, the long-term side effects of statin drugs, such as Alzheimer's, etc. Diuretics, such as, which would be like heart failure, kidney failure, uh, electrolyte imbalance, cramping, uh, etc. Um, antidepressants, you know, we get dependency, um, further neurochemical imbalance, tolerances, etc. Uh, and even suicidal tendencies and psychosis can happen long term. So we know that there's long term side effects from drugs. The same thing can go for a lot of these nutritional protocols, such as veganism and ketogenic diets. Um, if you use them to treat a disease, but then you stick to them long term, they can cause severe illnesses over time. Okay. Now, if you are dogmatic, you're going to be triggered by this. You're going to assume I'm an idiot. You're going to freak out. And it's, it's sad because what I'm saying, um, I'm, I believe, is very practical, it's logical, and it makes a lot of sense. So, um, so for some people, veganism might be able to be sustained long term. But I think it's very important, well, first of all, for some people, but for a large majority of people, um, veganism can cause severe digestive problems, not just when you're changing your diet either, because that's normal when you change your diet, especially if you start to add more fiber. But in the long term, gas, bloating, diarrhea, constipation, and even abdominal cramping and pain that doesn't go away after two months. Okay, This is very real. And it happens to a large amount of people. You see, people who have eaten a standard American diet or an unhealthy diet for most of their life, they assume that gas, bloating, and digestive issues are common. They think it's just normal to have stomach pains and gas and bloating. But what you don't realize is that's not normal. Okay, If you're eating a healthy diet, um, initially in the first two weeks you should have some side effects because you know as your body's adapting to the new style of eating but over time it should get used to it and it shouldn't be an issue anymore but people have long-term gas bloating and uh, digestive problems and then weakness and chronic infections and illness over time because their body just can't digest a lot of these plant foods I'm sorry that you don't agree with this. I'm sorry that it goes against what you want to believe, but this is the facts. <laughs> you know, I, I know how hard it can be to hear this. I know how much it upsets a lot of people because you all think that you're right. You all think that you know everything because you heard it from um, like an expert uh, that is vegan, you know, a vegan expert, right? <laughs> um, you know, you can hear a lot of a lot of statements that sound pretty convincing from paleo experts it doesn't mean that it's true. Everyone wants to follow their a diet guru. Everyone wants a religion to follow, a tribe, a team to root for. That's what it's all. That's why everyone gets freak, you know, freaks out when they hear counter evidence. God, it's pathetic. Um. So. There are long-term problems with veganism that happen for a lot of people, okay? And this is just plant foods in general, um, mainly the complex carbohydrates, okay? But for leafy greens, uh, raw fruits, and jasmine rice, right? Like white rice, and even white potatoes, okay? These tend to be a lot easier for most people to digest, and they might adapt to these a lot faster. They might have no problems with these. I myself have figured this out on my own. They're like the only plant foods I can eat without uh, seeing a fruit salad or, or like, a, like a, a vegetable salad in the toilet bowl afterward. 
I mean, if you're shitting out your food, you know, if you're shit, if you're eating something and then seeing it in in the toilet bowl, you know, every time you eat it over time, don't you kind of think that humans, if if we are meant to eat something, we wouldn't see it in the other side? It makes no sense. Like, oh, humans were meant to be, you know, herb herbivores and blah blah blah. Well, how come it's so hard to digest these plants? How come I'm seeing them in the toilet bowl? Oh, you know, you, you, you're the exception, not the norm. Yeah, but I see a large majority of people that have the same problem as me. Well, maybe they all have the same illness as you, blah, 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 blah. Anyway, uh, I, I digest meat just fine. Seems like the less plant foods a lot of people eat, and the more, the more animal products they eat, the better a lot of these people feel. Of course, if you have um, acid reflux, that means that you have a stomach acid deficiency. And without stomach acid, you're not going to be able to digest animal protein. So, of course, you'll have problems in that case. But you'll definitely develop health issues as a vegan if that's the case. You never solve the, the uh, acid reflux using apple cider vinegar um, or removing whatever medications are causing it. So... There's a lot of people that suffer on a vegan diet, and uh, mainly this is because plant foods tend to be hard to digest for a large amount of people. I mean, that's just how it is. Uh, probiotics, prebiotics, digestive enzymes, these don't always help people. In my case, it didn't. I spent a shit ton of money on the, on the highest quality probiotics I could buy. Um, God, that was that sucked. It was a waste of money. I tried so hard to make the vegan diet work. Um, another thing is a lot of people develop severe mental imbalances. And if you're triggered by videos like mine, then it kind of just shows you your mental health is not quite up to par with what it should be. You must have mental problems, okay? Mental health problems. If you're triggered by anything really especially like videos like mine I'm not even being derogatory <laughs> um, I'm having a simple logical discussion but um, there's people who develop neurological issues on a vegan diet and uh, severe like schizophrenia paranoia extreme stress that they just can't like physical stress that they just can't shake um, seizures and these types of things and I think it's interesting I've seen a lot of people that develop this and then they supplement with omega-3 uh, fish oil not algae and definitely not flaxseed okay like I, I see all these these people who are like oh well I've been doing flaxseed and I've been fine like look man just because you haven't developed seizures and things does not mean that your body is converting the flaxseed ALA to DHA and EPA. It just means that for now, your stores of DHA and EPA omega-3 is probably adequate, but eventually you might have these issues over time. They will present themselves. Uh, it is a scientific fact that ALA does not convert at an efficient rate to the active forms of omega-3, DHA, and, o and EPA that you need for brain health. And a lot of vegans could definitely benefit from just taking a fish oil supplement or eating fish three times a week, uh, salmon and tuna, etc. But they don't want to do it. They're scared of it. A uh, complete placebo, nocebo effect. They're so like scared of animal products that if they eat it, they're going to feel like overwhelming sense of anxiety and it's going to fuck them over. Um, but a lot of vegans have, have actually added animal products back in and they feel so much better and a lot of their health issues go away. Uh, B12, I know it's, uh, it's, made, it's supplemented in a lot of the animal feed and that's the only reason why a lot of people get B12 from animal products. But if you're not supplementing with B12, um, you're, you're pretty ignorant. It's, gonna be, it's not gonna be a very happy ending for you if you're not supplementing with B12 as a vitamin, as a, as a vegan, as a vitamin, <laughs> as a vitamin. Omega-3 fish oil as well. Um, I, uh, you know, and I, I think it's, it's crazy though. Here's, here's the main reason why I'm so persistent with this is that vegans experience health issues and they're so convinced 
that oh the, there's it's not the diet i'm either oh i'm detoxing or oh like my seizures that happened after i switched to a vegan diet it's no way related to veganism you know seizures is a pure purely neurological issue um the cause is not diet it has nothing to do with the food i'm eating uh, meanwhile there's people that experience the same side effects you uh, that you do as a vegan and they supplement with omega-3 fish oil and b12 and they feel better so you know this is exactly why i talk about dogma all the time it has nothing to do with me trying to be tribalistic about nutrition all i'm trying to do is spread awareness like hey man if you're so attached to an ideology it can fuck you in the ass it could literally hurt you it okay attachment is a root of suffering that's what buddha said and it's so true and very apparent when it comes to diet because they're so like oh veganism is the best thing ever all this science says that veganism is like uh, gonna make me live to be three thousand years old like there's no way that veganism can cause me uh you know diabetes or can cause me to rot waste away veganism can't be causing my neurological side effects it can't be my diet bro what's wrong with you Oh, Jesus. And of course, the raw vegans are the worst. Absolutely. And this is not an attack on veganism, although it might sound that way. This is me cr criticizing very brutally honestly um, the flaws within this. Um, and there's people that go full-on meat-eating, eating nothing but meat. And I know most vegans are not going to be able to fathom this. There's no way they can believe that it's true. And this is dogma at its finest. There's people like that go completely just meat-based, carnivore, like Jordan Peterson and his daughter. And the the least the, the less vegetables they include in their diet, the healthier they become. And then their markers of inflammation become non-existent. They have no signs of inflammation whatsoever when they go all meat. That's that could just be a, an exception might not work for everyone but to go from suicidally depressed and having horrible arthritis and psoriasis to all of a sudden having none of those symptoms at all by switching to a carnivore diet it kind of it can't be ignored you know and there and the thing is it's like oh those are just anecdotes you all are fucking idiots blah 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 like oh please we healed our issues with a meat-based diet and we're idiots because we're eating meat but we heal our issues we heal our issues just because we eat meat we're idiots even though it's 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 been doing us nothing but good so we should go vegan and suffer and 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 be on the verge of death because eating meat makes you an idiot makes no sense but that's how most vegans think this is why i'm constantly talking about dogma and then i get people who who are like oh well um Okinawans live to be a hundred uh, and they are mostly vegan and the uh, Seventh-day Adventists or whatever Live to be over a hundred and you know, they're vegan, but I'm gonna have to make a whole nother video on that because This again is the problem with dogma is you just you you believe everything you hear without actually researching it Okay, I have had karate instructors that actually lived and trained in Okinawa for the majority of their life, especially through World War II, which is around the time that there were the veganism thing was going on. Um, and they have family that still live in Okinawa to this day, and they can vouch for the, the fact that this whole vegan thing is complete misinformation. Um, and I have actually, uh, I, I've trained with people, with friend, I've, I have friends, I've trained with boxers and other martial artists who were actually stationed in Okinawa around the time of World War II when all this supposed veganism was going on. The, the, the actual Okinawan karate instructors who lived in Okinawa and have family in Okinawa, they have much more of a hands-on experience with this and they all say this whole veganism thing is complete nonsense, it's misinformation, they ate a lot of pork, they ate a lot of fish, but during World War II there was uh, periods of, of, of food shortage and famine um, and so that's why they resorted to plant foods, but everybody, uh, if they had uh, pig feet, if they had um, pork of any kind, uh, any kind of fish or eggs, 
they would go for that, definitely. But they couldn't a lot of that time during World War II when this uh, sweet potato craze is going on because a lot of, um, there was a lot of famine at the time, food shortages. But for the majority of the 1900s, um, Okinawa followed a uh, pork, fish, and vegetable-based diet with, with, uh, with small amounts of white rice, but not nearly as much as Japan. And then fermented foods and exercise was a huge part of their diet, uh, or sorry, was a huge part of their lifestyle. The majority of them practiced some form of uh, martial art, whether that was uh, uh, what, uh, kata, uh, qigong, grappling, uh, or just karate as a whole. And they, uh, even if a lot of them didn't practice martial arts, but they lived very active lifestyle, they, uh, they all fish. They were fish. There's a lot of fishing going on. There's a lot of uh, gardening and growing their own vegetables. Um, the majority of them got out in the sun uh, very often or got outside very often. They got a lot of exercise. They were very active, self-sufficient people, okay? And, that's, and all of these things play a big role in why they live so long. But, the, but from what I hear, and, and there's also data to back this up, uh, but, um, you know, and you're not going to find it in the China study, you're not going to find it in the blue zones uh, and, and whatnot. But uh, from what I hear, the sanitarians, the people who lived the longest, um, the majority of their life, they ate a lot of fish, a lot of uh, raw fish, actually. Um, they ate a lot of pork. Uh, a lot of pork feet, intestines, and other weird things. Um, and they did eat a lot of vegetables, okay? A lot of sweet potatoes. And uh, white rice was a part of their diet, but not nearly as much as Japan. So, oh, and a lot of teas. A whole lot of tea, okay? So these people who, like, just repeat everything they fucking hear, like, oh... You know, um, the Blue Zones and blah, 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 um, Costa Rica, blah, 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 you know, veganism extends your life, blah, blah, blah. Like, listen, facts are there's, there's tons and tons of humans living today, not back in, in the heyday when you weren't alive. But right now, there's a lot of people who try veganism and they suffer severely and they actually experience the best health of their life eating a meat-based diet. But there's a lot of vegans that claim that they're feeling super great on a vegan diet. Um, a lot of them are lying. A lot of them have plastic surgery. Just look at Happy Healthy Vegan. Um, look at that Mark guy, the blonde guy with his wife who has like fake boobs, fake face. Um, you know, they got fake teeth going on. I heard a lot of those, uh, a lot of stories from people who knew the, a lot of these vegan gurus um, that say that they cheat often. And this could be a lie, right? I don't believe it all. But um, I, I've heard of people who've seen David Wolf. Um, eating sushi, eating fish at a sushi restaurant, and he's fat, so it's not hard to believe, right? Uh, and then not to mention, you know, um, the fact that I know people who were stationed in Okinawa around that time, who I know karate masters and uh, other people and their, their children who I've trained with extensively um, and talked with for a long, long, long time. Who have family there now and who are living throughout Okinawa and they can vouch for the fact that this whole like um, Okinawan diet thing is a complete fad it's, it's not based in reality of what they're actually eating and uh, it's sad it's sad because he, he um, a lot of these people say they can't they can't think of living without meat for too long it's not a preference right especially you know diet uh, uh, caloric restriction do you think that they wanted to restrict their calories? No. Throughout famine, you know, they're uh, throughout all the, the food shortages and the famine, of course, they're going to be restricting their calories because there's a food shortage. They're forced to not eat enough, okay? It was not by choice. And if you think that that's the reason why they're, they live a long life, um, well, then you need to uh, take a philosophy class and work on your critical thinking skills. Um, so, and, and there's a lot of other things that I can, I can talk about and touch on. For example, there's, uh, I, I haven't really done enough research into this one, but I, I've, heard, I've heard that there's groups of people that have lived with exceptional longevity 
past 100 and they ate meat-based diets. I heard one of them was the Mormons, but I've got to look into that one. So I think that that's pretty much everything I want to get off my chest for now. Um, you know, correlation does not equal causation. And if you're you if you're basing all of your 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 information on um, population studies, well, there's your problem right there. You cannot use population studies to figure out uh, causation. You can only use that data for further clinical trials and things of that nature. Uh, and there was something else I wanted to talk about. But I guess I'll talk about it in another video. So if you have anything to say at all, put it down in the comments. Subscribe if you haven't already. I'll talk to you all in the next video.